personal relationship with Christ. And then he has already died on Calvary Cross and paid the price for you and I. Matthew 28, around about the 19th verse, says, he said he rose up with all power. He <laughs> said, now go ye, therefore, therefore go ye, preach, teach, and baptize in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And tell them what I have told you. I know I'm with you always. But I want you to put in your mind, he said, he rose with all power. So if you got Jesus in you, you have the same power to rebuild that demon that is messing with you. And not only that, but he gave us this Bible as a guideline. Yes. You know, when you buy a, a, a new vehicle, they give you a book for the vehicle. Amen. In that book, it tells you when you need to change the oil. Amen. It tells you things you need to check about the tire pressure. It then got so fast and now in the vehicle that the tire pressure, when it gets low, Things are flashing and telling this time needs some air. Yeah. So that's what this Bible is to us about life. Yeah. It is our God. Yeah. And He has told us in so many places in this Bible that all we have to do is call on Him. Yeah. I know there's one song that we sing. All the time, Jesus is on the main line. Just call him up and tell him what you want. If you're sick, tell him what you want. Just call him up and tell him what you want. I want to share with you a little bit today. The experience of some that has gone before us. Yes, Lord. The Bible, this Bible says that we have a cloud of witnesses, but if we don't read it and get to know, we won't know what the witness is. Amen. Right Amen. I want you to open your Bibles to 2 Kings, the 20th chapter. 2 Kings, the 20th chapter. Chapter. And we're going to start at verse 1. And when you find it, I want you to stand. 2 Kings, the 20th chapter, starting at verse 1. Second Kings, the 20th chapter, starting at verse 1. Amen. And it reads, In those days was Hezekiah sick unto death. And the prophet Isaiah, the son of Amon, came to him, and said unto him, Thus says the Lord, Set thine house in order, for thou shalt die and not live. Then he turned his face to the wall. Right now. And he prayed unto the Lord, saying, I beseech thee, O Lord. Remember now how I have Walk before thee in truth and with a perfect heart, mm -hmm. and have done that which is good in thy sight. And Hezekiah weeps sore. 
And it came to pass after Isaiah came out, came to pass the Ford Isaiah was gone out into the middle court that the word of the Lord came to him saying, Turn again and tell Hezekiah, the captain of my people. <laughs> Thus says the Lord, the God of David, thy father. I have heard thy prayer, and I have seen thy tears. Behold, I will heal thee on the third day. Thou shalt go up unto the house of the Lord, and I will add unto thee fifteen years, and I will deliver thee in this city out of the hand of Asia, and I will defend this city for my own sake and for my servant David's sake. You may take your seats. We're going to speak to you for a little while on a subject, just cry out for yourself. Just cry out for yourself. Amen. As we look at the situation of our world today, a lot of people are crying and complaining about things that is going on. But the Bible tells you that is nothing new under the sun. Right now. But a lot of us don't know that because we don't know the Word of God. But see, if you study that Word and get into it, you would know that Solomon is one that wrote this and said this. There is nothing new under the sun. And Solomon was the wisest and the richest man that ever lived because God loved him so much. So why don't you seek after the same wisdom, <laughs> come on y'all, and knowledge of God who is the one that supplies everything that you need. He said, Jesus said he rose with all power, so if you got Jesus, you have that power. He also says, uh, X. And you shall receive. Yes, yes, Knock, and the door shall be opened. Yes, and, and then somebody else says, and he will close doors that no man can shut. Get open. So why we worry about what we have done instead of worry about what we're doing? Paul tells us the press towards the mark of a high calling. Stop looking to your rear and be obedient to God's word. We walk around right here, woe is me. <laughs> and you still lie. He told us in Sunday school lesson this morning, if they don't cry, if they don't praise me, the rocks will cry. I don't know about you, but I don't want no rock crying out for me. Amen. You know, even when I have a pain, you know what come out of my mouth? Oh, Lord. <laughs> and when I call on his name, sometimes it just seems like he give me an extra step. Even though I have to have my third leg, we start walking tall. Because I have the mindset yes, yes, that's to cry out for myself. Amen. I don't call Betty and say, Betty, you need to come in here and pray for me. I have the ability to pray for myself. And it's okay to cry out to God. If you seem to cry out, then you're not a child of the king. Amen. Amen. I want you to look at Philippians 2. And let's look at the fifth verse. Philippians 2. And the fifth verse. You see, we got the 
learn to work out our own salvation. Philippians 2, we're going to start reading at verse 5, and it reads, let this mind, hello, let this mind, you know whose mind he's talking about? The mind of Christ. Be in you. Amen. You know, get the mindset of Jesus. Amen. Jesus told us in Philippians 4, 13, I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. Amen. So if you get that mindset of Christ, which is also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God. Some of us, we doubt ourselves. Amen. I know what the Bible said, but I can't do that. But he, he didn't told you this. Life and death in the power of the tongue. So what you speak, now. It's what it is. Yeah. But you have the power to rebuke anything yeah. in his holy name. Yeah. Hello? Yeah. And I said now, but made himself no reputation that took upon him the form of a servant. Mm -hmm. Now what that means, he paid the price already as a servant and showed you how to be a servant of his and gave you that same power so you need to use that power. Yes, Lord. And was made in the likeness of what? Men. Amen. So if Jesus can do it, guess who else can do it? <laughs> but you got to have a personal relationship. Amen. Now, if you run around here lying, you don't have a personal witness. If you run around here cursing folks out, you don't have a personal relationship. See, my Jesus didn't come for that mess. He came to heal those that was that away. So if you got a relationship with him, you are a new creature. Hello? Are you with me? And being found in fashion as a what? As a man, he was our example, and we are to follow him. Amen. He humbled himself and became obedient unto death. We are to do the same, die to our self. And let Jesus have his way Amen. in our life. Even the death of the cross. He told us to pick up our cross and follow him. Yes, Lord. Do you know that? Amen. It's in the Gospels. But you got to read it and get to know it for yourself. Amen. Wherefore God also have, has highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name. Amen. Why do you think I can get that extra step when I call on his name? Amen. <laughs> There's power. There's power in the name of Jesus. And that the name at that at that name, at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth. And that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Now what that tells me, my sisters and brothers, if we have Jesus, we have all the power we need. Wherefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, not in my presence only, 
but now much more in my what? Absence. When nobody else is around looking at you. <laughs> you get it? If they call pastors with you, you're going to be all nice. You don't curse. But when pastor's not with you, you should maintain the same. <laughs> same thing. But now, much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God which worketh in you both to will and to do his good pleasure. I promise you I'm not going to hold you long today. So I'm going to talk about our brother Hezekiah in 2 Kings. If you will, you look in your Bibles at the 18th chapter of 2 Kings. And I, I, I just want you to note that first verse. It tells you who Hezekiah is. He became the king of Israel. He was the son of Ahab, king of Judah. And he began to reign, he reigned for 25 years. Hezekiah trusted in the Lord God of Israel. So after he after him, there was none other like him. He was the king of Judah who instituted, instituted civil and religious reforms. Before he became the king, Judah was worshiping false gods, gods with a little g. See, we have to be careful of those little gods, those little foxes that will cause you to lose your salvation. You know, we mentioned that some of them are adultery, lying, backbiting, hating, mal malice. All of those things, refusing to follow the Spirit. Well, all those little things. Hezekiah tore down all those gods and brought the people back to worship the one and only true living God. He developed a, 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 a wonderful prayer life and had the people praising and giving God the glory in everything that they did. But Hezekiah also made a mistake by showing the Babylonians the treasures that God had given him. Sometimes he tells us, like he tells us in the word, in his word, don't give our pearls to the swine. Sometimes you have to know when to hold them and when to follow them. Because everybody don't understand this material walk that you have. Right. But Hezekiah had done some good things. And in chapter 20 that I read to you, between 20 and 18, the king of Assyria decided he was going to overtake Judah. Hezekiah heard the news and he went his clothes mm -hmm. and he went into prayer Amen. calling on the name of the Lord yes, yes. not for himself right now. but for the people right. and then he was telling the people don't worry about what's going on in the world Amen. that you are to trust in the Lord and lean not to your understanding. Hello. And, and then there was one came by and told, 
You know, you always got them on the sideline. Don't listen to him. He don't know what he's talking about. All right now. The king of Assyria has sent word and said, we're going to come and overtake your city. Yes, Lord. But the same Isaiah before came and told Hezekiah, he said, the Lord said, you stick with him. I, I'm paraphrasing now. He said, you stick with him. So Hezekiah kept on praying. And then Isaiah came again with this message out of scripture for today. On Isaiah, 2 Kings 20. In those days was Hezekiah sick. I can imagine that Hezekiah, after 25 years on the throne, had become a little older, wouldn't you say? You know that we all get older. Come on, 25 years. And uh, he was sick unto death. And the prophet Isaiah, the son of Ramah, came to him and said unto him, Thus said the Lord, Set thine house in order, for thou shalt die and not live. You know, I, I, I don't know about you, but I, I've heard of Plenty of times that the doctor had walked away. You better say that. Amen, amen. And said that we can't help. I can't do nothing else. But see, that's a God I know that surpasses all understanding and has never lost a case. Do you know what I mean? And look what his God did in verse 2. Then he turned his face to the wall and proceeded to pray. And he said, pray unto the Lord, saying, I beseech thee, I beg you, O Lord. Remember now how I have worked before thee in truth and with a perfect heart and have done that which is good in thy sight. And has to call Kaya weep so. You see, sometimes when we are going through something, mm -hmm. we have to remind the Lord mm -hmm. of what we have done. Amen. Remind the Lord of the good things Amen. that we have done. I, I can imagine his God told him about how he tore down all the walls of the false gods. And he built up the house of Zion Amen. in the name of Jesus. Do you understand what I'm trying to tell you? And, and, the, and he, he wept so hard. And look what it says. Isaiah was gone, headed away after giving him the news. But Isaiah hadn't got out of the middle court. You see, they had a set up back in the day. You had the inner king, the court, and the outer court, the middle court, and then the outer court. So Isaiah just had told him that and walked away so that prayer couldn't be that long. You see, it's not what you say to God. <laughs> it's where your heart is with God. Do you understand what I'm trying to See, God, God said the Holy Spirit intercedes when you can't even find the words to honor. Amen. The Holy Spirit is already working for you. Isaiah hadn't even got out the middle court. And God said to Isaiah, said, look, I want you to turn around. <laughs> said, I want you to go back and tell Hezekiah, look at this, the captain of my people. You know, 
God will capture me, the leader of my people. Get your house in order. You see, it's a personal thing. See, God already knew what his guy was doing. <laughs> Hello? But he just wanted to have his kind of call. He's on the main line. <laughs> so y'all understand what I'm saying? When you're on the main line with Jesus, he, he's always there. You don't have to pick up no dialing. You don't have to go to your cell phone and be pecking. All you have to do is say, Jesus, open up and talk to him. And he said, now, the captain of my people, thus says the, the Lord, the God of David, thy father, I have heard thy prayer. You see, if you look at it, when he turned to the wall, he didn't say that much. He could have just said Jesus. Because God knows your heart. He said, now, he said, now, I have seen thy what? Tears. It is nothing wrong with crying, my sisters and brothers. Say that. Say that. See, if you, if you know the story of Jesus himself, God himself, yes. when he went to see about Lazarus, mm -hmm. and Martha met him. <laughs> I'm talking about John 13, <laughs> John 11. And Martha met him and said, Lord, if you had been here, oh, my, my brother <laughs> wouldn't have died. And Jesus said, he is not dead. He will rise again. She said, I know he will arise at the resurrection. But if you look at Jesus, he says, I am the resurrection. So when you get Jesus, when you get him in your heart, you already been resurrected. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You've already worked out your soul salvation. So no matter what the world throw at you, the Lord have mercy. He will give you peace in the middle of all your storms. Because all of us are in a storm. Are we going through a storm? Are we coming out of a storm? Don't let the storms get you down. I remember when Jesus told the disciples that I want you to go to the other side. See, you got to understand we need to come over here where Jesus is. They tell me he went in the mountain to pray. And the disciples start rolling, going to the other side. Uh -huh. And they tell me about two o'clock in the morning, yeah. there came a tempest. Uh, you know, no, well, we got a tempest in our lives. Uh, tempest about finances. Uh, tempest about what somebody else said about you. Uh, tempest about what the mama ain't done for you. Uh, you know, you come up on a tempest. Uh, they were rowing, but they couldn't get anywhere. But then Jesus started walking on the water. And they looked and saw him walking on the water amidst the waves. And they said, oh, who is that a ghost? And Jesus said, it is I. And there was one in the boat by the name of Peter. Say, so Jesus, if that be you, bid me to come 
unto you. And Jesus said, come. And Peter stepped out on the water. Glory, glory. And he started walking yes, to Jesus. But then the wind stopped blowing. Yeah, you know, sometimes time we get distracted by yeah. what's going on the news media. Yeah. We get distracted by what's going on on the TV. Yeah. And we lose our focus. Yes, Lord. And he started sinking. Mm -hmm. And when he cried out to the Lord, he reached down mm -hmm. him up and pulled him up. Yes. If all you have to do is cry out yes. for yourself, yes. there's many witnesses in this body, in this book, <laughs> that explain what our God would do for you. You have to know who you're following. You have to know what you're following. He's told us that there's a lot of false witnesses out here. But we want to go along with the crowd too often. I don't need a crowd to cry out to my Lord. And I'm trying to show you through Hezekiah. He was told he was going to be dead. But God gave him 15 more years because he cried out. All you have to do is cry out for yourself. The one that I'm talking about is Mary's baby. The Bible tells me he came down to 42 generations. Mm -hmm. What I mean by 42 generations, there were some that was liars, some that was thieves, some that was homemongers. Yeah. See, it doesn't matter where you come from. Mm -hmm. It's where you are right. in him. Yes. Hello? Amen. Right. And he came down to 42 generations and he walked on this earth for 30 Three years. And he taught for three years. Now you say, well, that wasn't long, but it don't take you long when you get hooked with Jesus. That's right. What it said? Oh, taste and see. Oh, <laughs> hey, it don't take you long to get to know who he is. And, and, and he, he taught us for three years teaching us how to love one another. He put it plainly in John 13, verse 34 and 35, a new commandment I give you, that you love ye one another as I have loved you. By this, all men will know that you are my disciples for the love that you have for one another. But we're walking around hating. We're walking around talking about our own children. Talking about our own mama. That ain't love, my sister. Amen. But he taught us how to love one another. Yes, he did. Then he came into Jerusalem on a Friday. We know it is Palm Friday. Riding on a donkey. <laughs> and everybody was so happy to see it. Dad, praise the Lord. Laying down palm leaves, laying down their clothes, crying out, Hosanna, save us, save us. And the next Thursday, they went to the Garden of Gethsemane and got my Savior and took him over to Caiaphas' house. That's the high priest. Took him over to, to the high priest, the preacher, and all of his congregation, yes. church folks. Mm -hmm. all right, and they start beating him and spitting up on him, slapping him around. And then they said, let's take him over to the governor's house. The Bible said they took him over to Pilate's house. Yes. And it was like him Pilate because they didn't have the power to crucify anybody. So they took him over to Pilate's house and said, we want you 
to crucify this man. And Pilate said, what has he done? They accused him, had someone lying on him. Amen. You know, it's not good to lie on anybody. Because it's going to come back on you. And they lied on him. And Pilate said, I'm going to question this man myself. Pilate questioned him. But during his questioning, all he could find, there was no fault but love. Pilate said, I'm going to wash my hands. Give me a basin of water. I'm going to wash my hands of this man because I can't find no fault. They took him back from Pilate's house to Caiaphas' house. And they put a crown of thorns on his head. And blood run down his brow. They beat him and stopped him around till the next morning. The early that Friday morning, they started parading him through the streets of Jerusalem with a cross on his shoulder. My God made it up to God off the hill. And that same crowd that was cheering him last Friday was saying, crucify him. Crucify him. But my father didn't allow them to take his life. He laid it down for you and I. He allowed the man that he loved so much to put nails in his hand. Nails in his feet. And the Bible said he stretched him high. Stretched him wide and hung him high. They didn't realize he had said if I be lifted up Hey. <laughs> yes, indeed. I was wrong, man. See, that they, they, they forgot what they had read in the Old Testament. <laughs> the Bible says he stayed on that cross from the sixth to the ninth hour. But before he gave up the ghost, he looked down and said, Father, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And he gave up the ghost, and they pierced him in the side, and out came blood and water. And they took him down off that cross, and they placed him in a barry tomb. Sound like somebody knew he was going to get up. They're going to limb his tomb. <laughs> and the Bible says he stayed there. All day Friday. He stayed there all night, all day Saturday. He stayed there all night Saturday night. But early, early in the morning, he got up with all power. And the power is for you and I right now. And if you have that power, I want you to stay.